Alan Mishler. I'm presenting FADE, Fair Double Ensemble Learning for Observable and Counterfactual Outcomes. This is work with Edward Kennedy at Carnegie Mellon. FADE is an ensemble learning framework for building fair and accurate predictors. There are several tasks that you can accomplish within this framework. You can build a new predictor from scratch, attempt to improve the fairness, the fairness or accuracy of an existing benchmark predictor, and you can efficiently explore fairness, accuracy, and fairness, fairness trade-offs. Double here refers to several things. We build predictors in two stages, first learning a set of base predictors and then ensembling them. We also use doubly robust estimators, which appear in the literature as well under the heading double machine learning. And finally, we handle both counterfactual and observable fairness criteria. There are lots of methods out there for building fair predictors, so why do we need another one? Fade is simple and flexible, and it has a novel combination of properties. First, most existing methods are designed for strictly observable fairness criteria. As mentioned above, FADE can target either observable or counterfactual fairness criteria, and I'll clarify shortly what type of counterfactual criteria I'm referring to. Second, many methods are designed to target specific fairness criteria like demographic parity or equalized odds, and they don't necessarily generalize easily to other criteria. FADE can simultaneously target a large number of fairness criteria of a very general form. Similarly, many methods are designed for specific model classes, like logistic regression or SVMs. FADE is an ensemble learning method, so it can combine arbitrary models or basis functions. Fourth, there's a distinction in the literature between in-processing methods, which involve learning a model with constraints or penalties, and post-processing methods, which alter the outputs of an existing model. FADE allows you to combine arbitrary numbers of existing and new predictors, so in a sense it collapses this distinction. Fifth, many methods are computationally intensive, but FADE yields closed form solutions which are very quick to compute. And finally, many methods are supported by empirical results, but we provide theoretical guarantees for FADE, including fast convergence rates. Here's our problem notation. We have a vector of observed variables, z. For convenience, later on, we'll call the first three variables collectively w. a is a sensitive feature, such as race, sex, age. Our methods can be naturally extended to multi-valued sensitive features, but here we'll restrict to binary features for ease of exposition. X is some set of additional covariates. In a medical setting, for example, this could be demographics and medical history. S is some set of previously trained predictors, if we have any. So these might be existing tools whose fairness or accuracy we wish to improve. For example, S could represent predictors that are used in hospitals to help decide who needs to be admitted versus being sent home to recover. D is a binary decision or treatment variable, such as whether to hospitalize a patient. Y is a real valued outcome of interest, such as a marker of health or disease severity or a binary variable, such as patient mortality, death. And Y0 is the potential outcome that would be observed if possibly contrary to fact, the decision variable were set to zero. For example, Y0 could be a patient's health outcome if they're not hospitalized. The key challenge is that we only get to observe this for patients who are not hospitalized. For everyone else, this, count, this outcome remains counterfactual. This is going to motivate the use of causal inference techniques. There are many types of counterfactual fairness, so it's important to note that the counterfactuals we're interested in are with respect to the decision D. These counterfactuals are relevant to questions like, what would have happened if this patient had been sent home rather than being hospitalized? Many papers in counterfactual fairness instead consider counterfactuals with respect to the sensitive feature which are relevant to questions like what would have happened if this patient had been born female instead of male. The types of fairness criteria that FADE is designed to target depend on these same types of counterfactuals. For example, FADE can target either observable or counterfactual equalized odds. There are other notions of counterfactual fairness, for example, involving path-specific effects that FADE doesn't target. I won't attempt to characterize here when we should care about observable versus counterfactual fairness or different types of counterfactual fairness you can see the paper on archive for background and references. Now I'll describe the fade setup. We'll let y tilde denote, denote either y or y0, since we're interested in being able to handle either observable or counterfactual outcomes. Our target is a predictor f of w, where again w represents the different features that are available to us, including any previously existing predictors s, which we want to incorporate into our ensemble. The risk we'll consider is mean squared error, and we'll consider a very broad class of possible unfairness measures that, that take this form, the absolute expected value of the product of the predictor f with some function g that depends on w and y tilde. It turns out that this form captures a wide range of common disparity measures that are already in use, as well as many other hypothetical disparity measures. For the sake of concreteness, in our results, we'll consider three specific unfairness measures that can be expressed in this form. 
The first measure is the rate difference or rate disparity, which for example can detect violations of demographic parity. The other two measures are the generalized false positive and false negative rate differences in case y tilde is binary. These together can detect violations of equalized odds, which requires equal error rates for the two groups. And on its own, the false negative rate difference can detect violations of equal opportunity, which requires equal false negative rates for the two groups. All three of these unfairness measures, again, can be expressed in the general form given on the previous slide. Because we have counterfactual outcomes, we require a set of identifying assumptions to equate causal parameters to the observed data distribution. We make a fairly standard set of three identifying assumptions. I won't go into the details here, but you can see the paper for some intuition about what these mean and what you can do if they don't quite hold. So how do we actually go about constructing our predictors? Our approach involves first fixing some set of K basis functions that each map from the covariate space to the real line. The class of predictors that we'll consider is then just the span of those basis functions. In the ensemble learning literature, these are often called aggregated or stacked predictors. There are many possibilities for constructing a basis. It could include, for example, previously trained predictors, again, if you have any, newly trained predictors, or say a truncated orthogonal basis of some function space or any combination thereof. So now I'll introduce our predictor. And for now, I'll just focus on the counterfactual setting where y tilde is equal to y zero, the counterfactual outcome. Our S demand is a loss optimal unfairness penalized predictor of y zero. In the paper, we have two other types of estimates that involve constrained optimization instead of a penalized form, but here I'm just presenting the penalized form. So suppose we have T fairness functions and fix some positive penalty vector lambda. We define beta star lambda as the minimizer of the mean squared error plus the sum of weighted squared unfairness values, where the weights are given by these lambda j's. The reason for the squaring is that this gives us a closed form solution, which will enable us to efficiently compute a very large number of models for different penalties lambda. Under the identifying assumptions, we can write this closed form solution in this form, where instead of the counterfactual y0, we now have this quantity mu0. Mu0 is a nuisance parameter, which importantly only involves observed variables, so it can be estimated. So here's what's actually involved in constructing a counterfactually fair predictor. If we want to train new basis functions, rather than just using an existing set of predictors or some fixed basis, we'll train these on a data set dlearn. If not, we can skip directly to dtrain, which is the data set we'll use to estimate the optimal ensemble weights. Because in many cases, these are high stakes settings, you don't want to blindly deploy a predictor without understanding whether it's accurate and fair. So you would then estimate these properties on some test set d test. And only then if it's sufficiently fair and accurate, would you deploy it in the system. In order to obtain fast rates in general non-parametric settings, we'll split this, the training and test data, estimate the nuisance functions on one half, and then estimate the target parameters on the other half using doubly robust estimators. Actually, we'll do cross-fitting to retain sample size efficiency, but here for simplicity, I'm just illustrating a single split. Here's what our estimator for the ensemble weights looks like. Here, the notation PN just refers to the empirical measure or sample mean, and phi hat is a particular nuisance parameter estimate. The important takeaway here is that we can construct a large set of ensemble predictors very efficiently. First, you pick a large set of penalty vectors, lambda n. Then you compute the set of all predictors indexed by those lambdas and estimate the risk and fairness properties of each of those predictors. The advantage of this setup is that this big highlighted matrix inversion that defines beta hat can be computed as a series of rank one updates to an initial inverted matrix, this means that we can compute the whole solution set while performing only one matrix inversion. This fast computation allows users to efficiently trace out paths in various fairness accuracy spaces, as we'll see shortly. Briefly, the advantage of the doubly robust estimators here is that we obtain fast convergence up to root n rates without imposing any parametric assumptions on our data generating process. I'm not formally defining the excess risk or excess unfairness, but roughly this means that the risk and unfairness of our ensemble predictor converges to the optimum at fast rates, and this convergence is uniform over the set of possible penalty vectors, capital lambda. Now we'll illustrate fade on simulated and real data. For the application here, we'll look at recidivism prediction, comparing our method to the existing commercial uh, recidivism predictor compass. So for each data set, we'll train five base predictors to then aggregate. 
will apply a single unfairness penalty at a time and will also simultaneously apply penalties for all three of the unfairness measures introduced earlier. And we'll show a subset of results from each of these three data sets with additional results available in the paper. First, the simulations. We have four continuous covariates, binary outcomes. We use samples of size 1000 for learning and training, and we use a test set of size 10,000 to get the loss and fairness values. Since the counterfactuals are known here, we don't need to split the test set into nuisance and target sets. So first we train these five arbitrary base predictors. Here, no tuning and no fairness constraints or penalties. We have here the mean squared error, the area under the curve, and the three unfairness measures that were introduced earlier. The mean predictor here is just a constant, so it functions similarly to an intercept in a linear regression. Since it's a constant, it has relatively high mean squared error, and it necessarily has a value of zero for all three unfairness measures. Here, zero means no unfairness, while one means the maximum possible unfairness. The other four base predictors have much lower mean squared error, but relatively high unfairness values. The ordinary least squares predictor in the last row aggregates all five of these base predictors with no fairness penalties, so it will provide a baseline for the penalized predictors. As expected, the OLS predictor improves on the mean squared error of the base predictors. It has a high rate difference, so it's not particularly fair in that sense, but of course we haven't yet imposed a fairness penalty, so there's no reason that it should be. So first we'll apply a single penalty at a time for each of the three unfairness measures. Again, here's the set of lambdas, the penalty weights that we consider, ranging from zero, representing no penalty, to 2,000, representing a large penalty. This results in 11 models per penalty. On the left panel, we apply a penalty to the rate difference, in the middle panel to the false positive rate difference, and on the right panel, the false negative rate difference. In each panel, we plot all three unfairness measures, and we plot the mean squared error in blue. As you can see, the penalty successfully decreases the disparity. So as, as lambda increases, the orange line goes down in the left panel, the green line goes down in the middle panel, and the red line goes down in the right panel. Again, the penalty is applied in training. These values here are measured on the test set. Decreasing the target unfairness measure also doesn't incur a huge cost in mean squared error. So in each panel, the blue line, MSE, goes up only slightly as the target measure decreases. Notice also that in the leftmost panel, the green and red lines go up as the orange line goes down, so there's a fairness-fairness trade-off. Reducing one disparity comes at the cost of increasing the other two. In the middle and right panel, however, all the unfairness measures in general decrease together. So we're able to reduce all three unfairness measures simultaneously, even though we're only targeting one at a time. So the takeaway here is that we can, we can control the target penalty without a substantial cost in, in the error rate. Now we'll apply fade to compass. Here we're using a version of compass that's expressed in deciles from 0.1 to 1. We split our data here, and each fold of our data is roughly of size 1,000. So here we show the results of applying three penalties simultaneously. The whole process of training the basis predictors and the nuisance parameter models, computing the aggregated predictors, and estimating the loss and fairness values of those predictors took around 15 seconds on my laptop from 2013. Here are the results for all 1,331 models as well as the basis predictors. The x-axis is the mean squared error, the y-axis is the rate difference. The triangle at the top represents compass, the gray x's represent the base predictors, the red square represents the unpenalized least squares predictor. Each blue circle represents an aggregated fade predictor. So there are 1,331 of them, but many of them substantially overlap in this space. And the gray contour lines represent radii around the origin. As expected, the OLS predictor has the smallest mean squared error. Some of the base predictors have smaller mean squared error than compass, and they all have smaller rate differences. The majority of the fade predictors improve on compass with respect to both, both measures. Notably, there are many predictors that take the rate difference essentially to zero with very little cost of mean squared error relative to the OLS predictor. We have similar results for the other two unfairness measures. Once again, we can take both these measures essentially to zero with very small increase in mean squared error relative to the least squares predictor. We see here that the trade-offs also look different for different unfairness measures. So this approach provides a principled way to explore these trade-offs in any given problem setting. Now, what about fairness-fairness trade-offs? Turns out here that we can effectively jointly minimize all three unfairness measures simultaneously. So here we have the least squares predictor with compass again for reference. And here in the middle row, we have the quote unquote best model, meaning the model that minimizes the L2 norm of mean squared error and the three unfairness measures. We see that all three disparities can be minimized with almost no increase in loss relative to the OLS predictor, 
and that we can uniformly improve on Compass. To summarize, I presented FADE, which is an ensemble learning method for fairness. FADE can handle counterfactual or observable fairness and performance measures. And although I only presented one method here, there are three different methods in the paper corresponding to different tasks you might want to accomplish. FADE comes with theoretical guarantees, including fast convergence of the excess risk and unfairness to zero, as well as good empirical performance on real and simulated data. Thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to hearing any questions or feedback you may have.